Hi, I'm Rushil Khurana and today I'm going to talk about my paper Beyond the Prototype, Understanding the Challenge of Scaling Hardware Device Production. There has been an uptick in electronic devices that surround us, from smart speakers in your house to gaming consoles used by millions, mixed reality headsets, or even your next big wearable. Hardware underpins all these technologies. In fact, Every time you make an internet search or use cloud computing to store your photos, hardware supports the computation and storage in data centers. It would not be an exaggeration to state that hardware forms the backbone of technology as much as software. And the process of realizing new hardware can broadly be split into two phases. Phase one is a period of ideation, experimentation, and design iteration that leads to new device concepts and ultimately working prototypes. Phase two is transitioning beyond the basic prototype, typically resulting in hundreds to hundreds of thousands of units. And many tools and years of research have made it easy for newcomers to tackle phase one. So we focus on phase two, which takes the first functional prototypes to a productization phase. Now, within this phase, if you look at hardware products based on their manufacturing volume, the number of units made, we can see two successful categories. One where automated production is used successfully with more than 5,000 units a year. And second, hobby products where craft production techniques are used to make less than 100 units a year. The kind you would see on websites like Etsy. However, there is a gap between the two where low volume production sets. We first look at why phase two is hard. You make software once, you can copy it a million times, the exact same replica. This is not true for hardware. No hardware production process will create truly identical copies due to component tolerances, variability in manufacturing, sourcing consistent materials from suppliers, and so on. This replication challenge is a unique problem to hardware. Software is agile. It is relatively easy to get feedback and improve the design and development of a software. It is not so easy for hardware. It is difficult for users to provide meaningful feedback early on when prototypes are relatively crude. But building something that can actually be tested, a close to finished prototype, it requires a lot of processes such as design, manufacturing and tooling to be complete. At this point, making improvements based on our feedback may require significant changes to these processes, which is costly. Along the same lines, you can update software with the push of a button. You can fix bugs, add new features while you're sitting on a beach in Hawaii. There isn't a viable equivalent for hardware. Updating hardware incurs dramatically higher costs. Again, going back to fix the manufacturing processes after is costly. There is a common theme among these challenges. Hardware is expensive. Everything from design to manufacturing assembly, compliance testing, certification, and tooling production. Now, nobody is saying software dev is easy. Building a scalable software is hard, takes effort, but there are a lot of tools to support programmers. It's important to understand that you can sit at home with minimal training or best practices, make an app and still reach millions of users. So we modify our original statement. Not only is hardware dev expensive, without many tools to make it easier, it is also very hard. We believe that phase two manufacturing is a bottleneck for the success of new devices. To verify this and to understand what are some of the most common challenges faced in scaling up hardware production, we take an empirical approach. We conducted semi-structured interviews with 25 participants. We divided them into two categories, creators and enablers. We defined creators as individuals who have undertaken low volume hardware device manufacturing either alone or as a part of a small team. Creators can be someone running a crowdfunding campaign to CEO of a startup. For our purposes, the key characteristic is that they are personally invested in taking a hardware prototype into production. On the other hand, enablers are individuals who assist creators in achieving their goal. 
such as people at startup incubators, accelerators, crowdfunding organizations, and contract manufacturing companies. Each enabler has built up knowledge of different stages of the process. We try to balance the interviewees for creators, enablers, geographic location. We had first time creators, repeat creators, and veterans with 20 years of experience. And we conducted thematic analysis on our interviews and four major themes emerged. First, the creators typically commit the productization process without the technical knowledge necessary to be successful. Many of them have a university degree, such as computer science, mechanical engineering, or electrical engineering, but none of our creators describe having formal education regarding the transition from design to manufacturing. Here is a quote from one of our enablers that describes that there's a systematic knowledge gap. The universities do not teach us how to transition from design to manufacturing. And this lack of knowledge leads to issues such as the one faced by this creator that built something complex, ended up spending money on something that would simply not work as a product due to the lack of knowledge for design of manufacturing. Therefore, a gap exists not only in what the creators know, but also in how they access resources to fill these gaps. This appears to be in contrast with the software industry where a lot of resources have evolved over time, like articles, design patterns, checklists, and even video courses. Well, there's a gap in not only the technical knowledge, but also the non-technical knowledge of our creators. In addition to the technical skills, many other areas are critical to the success, including finance, marketing, distribution, customer service. The issue most consistently raised by both enablers and creators was understanding the cost and complexity of taking a hardware product to market. One creator said, whatever funding you think you need to mass produce, you need more. You need way more. That is always the rule of the thumb. Nobody ever comes in under budget. Armed with this insight, perhaps it's not surprising to learn that around half of the creators we talked to hadn't made any profit from the products even after years of operating. Moreover, finance wasn't the only non-technical topic raised by creators and enablers. To take another example, even creators aware of the requirements of compliance were typically surprised by the complexity of implementing them. To be fair, there are many resources that can educate a creator with the required skills, and perhaps what should be common knowledge among the creators. However, Many of the hardware creators we interviewed came from a software background, where some of the knowledge, such as certification laws, are less relevant for bringing a product to market. One enabler summed it well. The lack of knowledge is challenging, but the biggest challenge, imagine everything we're talking about happening simultaneously. That's the challenge of hardware. Having discovered the common knowledge gaps, we also learned that even when the creators do broadly know what they should do, they don't always do them effectively. We repeatedly heard examples of creators that did not follow best practices. They did not apply the minimum level of rigor necessary to avoid manufacturing issues, resulting in avoidable delays and costs. And manufacturing is a costly and error-prone business. If the creators are not rigorous in building custom test jigs, testing component specifications, choosing the right suppliers, then failure at any point may cause a domino effect. Enablers cited rigor as one of the key challenges faced by creators that were not successful. Another failure example relates to a creator who did not check the availability of supply of a key component, the microcontroller, until late in the process, and it ended up costing them money. Lastly, but perhaps not surprisingly, creators and enablers consistently describe the importance of building relationships with a network of partners. For example, we heard about a PCB manufacturing partner who went back to the creator, assisted them in improving their board design despite losing out on profit margins. We noticed that creators use one of two quite different strategies when picking a manufacturing partner. The first set of creators value physical proximity and the second optimized on cost of materials. The first ones that valued proximity were willing to accept a higher quoted cost in return for a partner that would 
they would be able to visit often and communicate with easily. These creators anticipated that benefits such as ability to rework, ability to visit, the factory would outweigh the higher code. The second set optimized on the cost of materials, typically picking factories based in China. However, in most cases, creators ultimately concluded that visiting the manufacturing partner in person and spending time on the factory floor was essential. They worked on their relationship. However, relationships are not just with the manufacturer. Creators often rely on a network of partners to help them with recommendations, introduction to experts, equipment suppliers, or other services. Creators also often build a professional network of peers, like-minded individuals, that they would meet at events of common interest, such as make a fair, tear down, or working in maker spaces and tech shops. This network appears to provide a community and sense of belonging. And all of our participants saw a lot of value in building relationships with the product's user base, from market research, crowdfunding engagement, or even beta testing. In fact, one of our creators even managed to recruit some talent to work on the product itself. We have discovered a few problems, but before we wrap up, let's also look at some opportunities that these problems create. What can we as technologists do to help? Three of these opportunities emerge directly from the themes. The lack of technical and non-technical knowledge points toward a simple need for better documentation. We observe that enablers typically have a defined process to organize and keep track of creators' progress and overall status. There is a need for targeted tools that support the most common processes used in hardware design. Over the past decade, the evolution of tools to support new software creators has dramatically lowered the bar for successfully commercializing a software product without prior knowledge or experience. We envision a future where hardware creators have ready access to a virtual community in the same way the software developers do. While not part of a particular theme, but one common pattern we noticed in our interviews was difficulty of manufacturing enclosures at low volumes. The most common production method is injection molding, but the initial cost of necessary tooling is typically five to 10,000 US dollars per piece, and they're time consuming to produce. That is too much for many low volume products. 3D printing can support DIY products. It is not yet a viable substitution for injection molding for most applications. If a new technique could better bridge the gap, it would likely have a significant impact. There has been some work in the area of testing for electronics design, but to our knowledge, there's a gap in work on testing for electronics production. The current method of building a custom test jig by manufacturers is a black box to many creators. We propose making a set of open source test jigs, reference designs, hardware and firmware templates, or design patterns that creators could readily modify to suit their particular testing requirements. Thank you. For more information, please read our paper or contact one of the authors.